Hi everyone. Uh, today I wanted to do a video. I thought I would climb up onto my soapbox and maybe, just maybe, you know, drop a little bit of wisdom. Be wise old owl. Um, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about some things that are very personal to me. So we're going to get deep and we're going to get a little bit heavy. So. I'm going to be talking about my high school experience, um, and within that topic, a few of the subtopics that were more serious for me in high school, such as eating problems and bullying. So in my 50 random facts about me video, I said that I was a genuinely happy person, and I am, but I did not used to be that way. Um, Looking back at it now, it's kind of a, it's a foreign concept to me to know that I did not like who I was. And so, where to begin? I started high school in 2006, and I graduated in 2010. So I've had a few years to kind of reflect on my high school career, and it was, as much as I did not like high school, it was a huge influence on me and had a huge bearing on who I am today. So when I entered high school in 2006, I was kind of in one of those peripheral groups. I wasn't, I wasn't in the popular kids group, and I wasn't in like the drama group or like the anime kids group. I was just kind of in one of those, you know, ill-defined groups. Um, I was a little bit weird, and um, I like that. And I entered high school with a friend of mine who had a very positive influence on me. She was super crazy and out there and, you know, she, she projected herself with this air of confidence that rubbed off on me. So I was comfortable being the weirdo that I am. But she ended up transferring halfway through the first quarter or first semester. She transferred to a different high school. So I no longer had that crazy partner in crime, and I was just kind of left flailing, kind of searching for my niche um, in terms of a high school group. So I ended up uh, becoming really close to a girl who is still to this day one of my best friends. And throughout high school, it became apparent that she was one of the, you know, the contenders, the leading people for that, that position of most popular. She was very confident and she had such this, she had such a conviction who she was. And, but she was very different from the person, that, from my friend that I entered high school with. Um, not in bad ways, they were just different. And so, as a result of that, when I started to acclimate myself into her own group, I kind of had to tone myself down a little bit. Um, I guess the way I would describe it is that she was Aragorn, you know, like she took the reins and she blazed the path and she was the leader. But I would, I was more like, I guess like legless, like I was more quiet and reflective and I had to kind of like stealth my way through high school. And um, that's when my bullying really, or my bullying experiences really took off, was in my sophomore year of high school. So I was 15, 16 at this time, and um, when I entered high school, I was a little bit overweight. I wasn't, you know, hugely overweight, but <laughs> as I like to think of it, every pound counts in high school. So I was probably about 160, 165, and um, I was self-conscious about my weight because people would tease me about it. And the reason they were doing so was because my best friend, who was the most popular girl in our class, ended up dating the most popular boy in our class. And when things didn't work out, and he was being typical high school, you know, nonchalant D-bag towards her, I let him know. I let him know that he wasn't going to walk all over my friend on my watch. And because of that, and because he had so much influence over the other boys in our class, I was kind of relegated to, you know, like, 
the outskirts or the outside of the group. So it didn't take long until all the other popular boys in our class um, started hounding on me for various reasons, but most prominently for my weight. And so there were a few experiences that happened to me that I, I still remember. Uh, one of them being uh, one of the more popular boys in the class coming up to me during PE, and he found he, first of all he made sure he had a he had an audience, right? Of course. So he found this plastic fork on the ground, and he came up to me and he started poking me on the arm, and then he turned to all his friends and said, "Oh, you know, sorry boys, the meat's not ready yet." I was like, looking back on that, that is a very creative way to humiliate someone, but. Oh, that was that was bad. That was that hurt me deeply, and I let that I let that delve into my psyche, and I let it fester until this cancer, you know, formed from that and ended up spreading. And I had no defense against this cancer that was spreading in my mind towards my self-image. And so, in between sophomore and junior year, I remember I remember the day that I knew that I was, I was going to have a problem with my weight. Um, it was at this event called Trackathon that we had at our school and we basically stayed there overnight and we were doing laps to raise money and people camped out and since it was May, you know, it was warm weather, all the girls were, you know, in their bathing suits and you know, to me, oh, I thought they looked so great and so when I came back from that that day, back to my house, I just remember knowing that, or saying to myself, okay, I'm going to lose weight. And so in between May and September, when I went back into my, back to high school my junior year, I ended up losing about 40 pounds, and my lowest was 118. And I remember going back first day of junior year and, you know, I could, I knew that people were whispering about me like, oh, look at Avery, you know, she lost so much weight. And, you know, one of the popular girls ended up coming up to me and said, oh, wow, you look great. Like, what, what size jeans are you wearing? And looking back on it, it's sick. It is sick because it took me having to starve myself for months in order to gain their, uh, their sick approval. And I just look back on this whole experience with such regret because I allowed myself to succumb to that perverted and ludicrous pressure of high school. And to this day, and, and that lasted all through throughout high school, my eating problems. And to this day, I still have um, some negative side effects of that. Uh, you know, for instance, my heart isn't all that great. Sometimes I skip a bead and I have arrhythmias and it's because I deprive myself of you know, those, those electrolytes that are so important to a healthy heart system that it's still not where it should be. Even after years of uh, convalescing and um, kind of uh, changing up my diet so uh, in a healthy way. So I remember like people started to want to be my friend when I was thinner and at the time you know, I was so impressionable and I was so weak that I kept going with it. And so by the time I was a senior, I only ended up going to about 60% of my classes because I would wake up in the morning and I was so tired. I had no energy. And I was a great student my first years of high school, but then after that, my grades started to slip because I just couldn't make it to class because I was so tired. I was so lethargic and depressed, and I thought that losing weight was going to make my life great, and it did the opposite. So it was hard because I had all of these teachers that I respected, and I knew that they looked at me, and you know, they could only see the surface, they didn't know what was going on underneath, and I knew that they were looking at me thinking, wow, you know, she's really lost her touch, she's so lazy, she doesn't care, and you know, my grades suffered horribly because of that. So it was, it's just a huge regret that I have to this day. And I wish that I had spent my high school career making good memories rather than memories that I wanted to forget.
high school I was kind of, I was quiet, I was shy, and the main reason for that was because I could not, for the life of me, identify myself with these other girls. Whenever I hung out with them, the topics of conversation would include, like, celebrity culture and, you know, boys and, and sex, and I'm not saying that these topics don't have value. All I'm saying is that I couldn't relate to them. I'm sure that if I were in a high school group and all we talked about was like gardening and self-sufficiency in Lord of the Rings, someone who wasn't interested in those topics would be having a hard time. So I'm just saying personally, I couldn't identify with that. And as much as I tried, I could not derive any kind of pleasure or joy from what was being talked about. Also in high school, I was not interested in boys. I wasn't interested in dating, I wasn't interested in any of that. So I think another reason the boys picked on me a lot was because they knew that I was not interested in them. They just didn't like that they weren't catching my attention. And you know, those weren't the popular boys weren't the kind of boys that I was attracted to in high school anyway, and I'm still not. I'm not attracted to that, you know, like, that putting on airs and walk swaggering around with such bravado. That's not confidence to me. Confidence to me is understanding your characteristics and having this kind of humble conviction for them and just staying true to yourself no matter what. So the kind of boys that I was attracted to and still am attracted to are the super, super dorky, nerdy, intelligent boys. I love that kind of thing because I can see, right, I can see, I see you, okay? If you're putting on airs, I can tell right away. But uh, yeah, that, that guy or that boy who said that rude comment to me with the fork, I remember by the time I was in senior year, I was kind of coming out of the trance of having to please these people and impress them. And I remember I made sure I had an audience. And I said, hey, so-and-so, yeah, hey, uh, do you recall when you came up to me and made fun of my weight that one day in PE? And, he, and you know, by this time he had he had grown himself. So he was like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry about that. You know, oh, I didn't mean it. And the reason I did that was because I wanted... I wanted him to realize that his comments, while they might be passing for him, can have a huge effect on other people. And so, you know, now it, it doesn't affect, it, you know, I wouldn't have done that because I realized that anyone's comments about me, whether positive or negative, don't really have that much effect on me. And the reason for that is because, who said that quote? I think it was Eleanor Roosevelt? No, you can't, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. So the mistake, the biggest mistake I made in high school was listening to that negativity and believing it. You know, I decided to believe that about myself. Now it's like, if someone has anything negative to say about me, I take that, thank you. If someone has something positive to say about me, you know, I take that, thank you. But I am my own biggest influence. And if you're being bullied in high school, my number one, I guess, input that I have for you is that people who bully you are not happy with themselves. Just understand that while they're not being nice to you, they still do deserve compassion because they're probably being bullied at home or by their friends or even themselves. They might bully themselves. So no matter what, you're not going to find a bully that's happy with themselves and with life fully. It, it just doesn't happen. There's a reason people lash out at other people. So if you're being bullied, just keep that in mind. That person is not happy with themselves, and, you know, it doesn't give them any right, of course, to attack you, but just keep that and know that, you know, this bully is probably having a harder time than you. My number one thing is just always be kind to other people. It really is the easiest way to get through life. I think that's pretty much it. High school was horrible. I did not like it. And looking back now, I wish that I had just um, been more of myself. I think that's all I wanted to say. You know, kind of a, 
a little bit of a somber topic, but I felt like I wanted to share that with you. Um, one last thing I did want to mention is this whole Google Plus integration has been a nightmare because I can no longer reply to some people. Um, I have to reply via Google Plus and sometimes the username does not come up. So yes, I have read your comments and shortly afterwards a sense of rage for not being able to reply. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you soon.